<laughs> yeah. Hey guys. So today we have Mr. Netrapal with us. So he is pretty famous on Twitter. If you follow Twitter, you can actually see a lot of his um, works on there. So he particularly focuses on reservation, like a, a data oriented approach towards reservation and, you know, um, debunks a lot of the misconception misconceptions regarding reservation that's out there um, among a lot of people. So that is how I got introduced to Mr. Netrapal. Do you want to introduce yourself to the audience, that, you know, give a basic introduction of what you what you do and that kind of stuff? So thank you for inviting me to the show. Uh, first of all, I'm privileged uh, to be on this show. So uh, uh, to introduce myself, I am like, I come from Bangalore. Okay, so from a small place called Shirampram. So then uh, I, uh, my, my, both my father and mother, they were, uh, they were like, they were brought up, I was brought up in the Harijan colony in Shirampram. So that is the background. So I, I have experienced, have the experience of all these things. Plus uh, the struggle of a Dalit kid to come up. So I have faced it in my own, my, my life. Like, for example, uh, for example, so what I'm telling you is that it is not easy for people like us to come up, okay? Because it, it, the, the thing is that every door is closed for us, So, but we have to fight it out and then somehow we have to come up. So I went on to do my graduation from IIT Madras. So I did my tech in electrical engineering. So then a uh, couple of years, I was a software engineer in Motorola. I did my PGDM in IIM Bangalore. But then my mother told that I have to get into civil services. So I wrote civil services and then I got it, uh, got in in first attempt, I got in in 2005 to IPS, but I got Jammu Kashmir. So I again attempted because I wanted to work in my state. So then second time I got uh, 236 rank and then I was posted to Indian Revenue Service. Presently, I am in the same service for uh, almost like 17 years now. And then I'm working as additional commissioner of income tax in Bangalore. So oh, so I have uh, have done many good cases and I was also awarded the finance minister award a couple of years back for my work in income tax department. On, on, the, on the reservation part, I, I uh, my interest here, like, see, like, it was always there because, see, any uh, Dalit kid will always want to know about Ambedkar and about why reservation, what reservations are. But unfortunately, nobody is told, nobody is taught also anywhere in any schools. So I have, I, I have been reading Ambedkar's book, all volume 1 to 19, right from my IIT days. So, but, but the thing is that uh, uh, if anybody reads those books, you will realize that those books are very complicated books. It's not like uh, you will not be able to understand at the first go because it is written in such language. So I kept on reading them and then researching. And then once I started writing on Twitter, I found a lot of people resonating with me. Like they also had the same kind of a thoughts which I had. And then many people started sharing their data with me. So over a period of time, this data become a mammoth data. And then uh, presently, uh, uh, the kind of information which I am putting out, I think very few handles they, they are able to put out because of the database which we have built over a period of time on reservations. So right from uh, uh, every issue like Bihar cash census to even the latest subcategorization, we have been able to give guidance to people. And also some of these data have been used in litigation in Supreme Courts, where we, 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 we where, where, like, for example, in Bihar cash census, we have already given that data. So it will be filed in the Supreme Court, like why the Bihar cash census is correct. So that is the kind of work that is this I am doing because see, as see, we have received a, a lot from the society, we have to pay back to society. And then the second thing is that there is a lot of myths about reservations. See, already there are a lot of obstacles for a Dalit kid or a OBC kid who is coming up. Okay, but uh, all these narratives which people are building in uh, Twitter, it creates some kind of an inferiority complex in these kids. When you, when you tell like you're a reserved kid, so many people 
like they they go back okay so that kid may be extraordinarily brilliant but what happens is that by using that one item no they'll bring them down so we have to build that uh, consciousness in these kids that that being reserved is not bad okay it's nothing wrong in that because see that is that is being given to you to come up nothing else it does not mean that you don't have any merit or anything but what has happened is over a period of time a lot of narratives have been built and i think it has been built purposefully okay so by by a set of uh, people to bring the morale down among the scst obc kids okay so uh, yeah, so it has been happening in various forms but i think now we are able to counter all these myths using proper data and uh, i am uh, actually proud of that because many of them have told that they have used my data to counter the co- arguments so that, that is that is something which i feel proud because see i am helping many people to do that okay so and today also i constantly update the data and then i have been publishing a large number of data sets which will help the community that is scst obc community mm-hmm. yeah i mean i agree it's, it's a very important work you're doing because you know i mean me personally when i was studying with my peers even the scst you know and you know the the oppressed caste groups uh, people from the oppressed 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 caste groups believed that you know they were doing something wrong by you know like <laughs> um yeah yeah yeah, yeah. In, in reservations and so on taking reservation so uh, that is how no like uh, for example uh, uh, i had uh, a written on this like for example in iits in iits when you go the first thing they'll ask you is not your caste nobody will ask you your caste what will they ask you they'll ask you your je rank moment you tell your je rank they know your caste indirectly <laughs> so, so that is how see the present day caste discrimination has changed in form substance everything so the way it operates is very different like for example in iits in the last placement uh, uh, session many companies were found to be asking je rank instead of cgpa why do they require je rank huh? so the, the people should ask this question see for example a sc st obc boy who okay let us assume that he took reservation he entered iits but in iits he studied well he got into uh, uh, he, he got good cgpa okay why should the companies ask uh, the j e rank what is the thing but then the companies some of the companies i spoke with they were telling that no no j e rank is the only test of is it is a third party test they we don't have any other test like that indicates an individual ability but what i am telling you you are taking that 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 kid came inside iit he studied hard he caught up he ca- and he did extraordinarily well in the exams he got good marks so which is better so see th- these are all ways of finding who you are and then trying to aggregate you into various blocks so so th- th- this is the thing so unfortunately uh, it happens in different forms in our societies and then uh, many a times it happens in a subtle way where you will not even find out okay so uh, that is where uh, all this like all these discussions become important Mm-hmm. I agree. So I think that is a good, you know, uh, set place to get into the first question, right? Um, so when I interact with a lot of my peers, right, um, in my school, college, everywhere, um, if they're from a privileged background, a privileged caste background, they're usually blind about how the caste system works in the society because it doesn't affect them, right? So. you know a, 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 the first thing that comes into their mind when we talk about caste reservation and stuff like that it, it's like you know no one you know like oppresses people overtly right overt forms of oppression is very rare it is just like one or two incidents here and there right it's it's really hard to explain to them that you know that is not the major form of oppression that exists in our society right now most of the oppression that exists in our society is very subtle in a very you know hidden you know it's, it's like are you vegetarian or a non vegetarian that kind of stuff um do you want to explain how you know like 
like the, the what you were saying right do you want to expand more on that and explain how uh, these subtle operation tell you uh like when you take the case of a dalit child like a shrill caste child his experiences are very very different from other children like for example i'll tell you the first time when i felt that i am from i am somewhat different okay was in a classroom where my teacher came and called my name and others like few of my people who were eligible for scholarships so they called so we got up then what happened was like only five of us got up that is from the scheduled caste so we what what did we think was that time that see we are like some kind of a minority in the class okay like for example that that impression comes and we are we are like come some kind of a different but today when i research you will be surprised that 25 to 30% of india's population is scheduled caste <laughs> so see the the what why what why i'm telling you is the basic things that what you are what is your population where you come from why the schedule caste were created all these things are not known to our kids at all and the reservations per se is considered to be anti merit okay see there is a, there is an angle like anti merit versus distributive justice okay so but in india what has happened is predominantly people consider it as anti merit and all this thing starts with your je exams neet exams where people start competing and then it it all start the concept of merit is built into the society okay so because of this what happens is that uh, anything which go, which is going against merit is considered to be very harmful to the society okay like, like for example uh, if if you have seen the twitter memes they they start telling that reservation because of reservation uh what what is happening the countries are going down the india's gdp is going down okay so india is not going to develop so for one of those uh, memes i replied back i told them that see do you know how many secretaries in india are from reserved categories there are hardly anybody okay there are hardly three or four from reserved categories how can you tell that their performance is responsible for the entire under development correct so so see, the the thing is that people try to relate unrelated things when it comes to reservation just to show your place see they want you to be down okay so they want to build a stereotypical image of a dalit that he yeah. is not hard working he is not capable his academic abilities are weak okay if he has got a je rank in reserved category he is a dud he cannot survive in the see what happens is that this stereotypical image is coming right from the scriptures like if you go to manusmriti or anything what what did manusmriti or uh, they they talk about they talk about the varna system that is one 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 set of people are good at doing one things for example if you are a scheduled caste you are good at doing leather work you are good at doing uh, 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 handling skins okay then if you are a brahmin you are uh, good in uh, teaching you are good in uh, uh, educating uh, you are good in uh, priestly work so uh, kshatriyas are go warriors like that so so this kind of a myth is created okay so all these things aids in creation of that myth that a particular set of people possess that kind of a skill and only they have to be there so the the same thing has uh, like what happens and this starts operating in sub in your subconscious mind like for example when you go to let me give you an example of a placement interview you have a placement interview you have three kids one one sc one uh, obc and another general all have same cgpa 8 who will you recruit probably uh, some upper caste uh, dude why That's- because see that fellow will take the je rank now uh, he will think that the je rank this fellow is upper caste he has competed and he has come up but if you really see the marks differential between that guy and this guy the reserved guy it will be very less i had written in twitter also one analysis of aims marks aims marks the reserved candidate marks see you see only the ranks but you should see the marks scored by them 
the marks scored by the general candidate and the marks scored by the reserved candidate how much was the difference in the score Six percent. That's all. There was only difference of six percent marks. Can you tell that just by six percent marks difference, this fellow is useless? You cannot tell. The same thing in UPSC. UPSC, I had we had analyzed a data set of ten thousand kids. Okay, right from two thousand seven to two thousand seventeen, and we found out that what is the marks differential between the, uh, uh, the general category students and the reserved category students. You know what is the marks differential? You will be surprised. It is not even five to four, five to four percent. Okay, so this is the kind of differentials which you are talking of. But what is happening is that people generally build myths, telling that I am uh, the general category kid is getting at eighty uh, percent, but reserve category kids will get at thirty, forty percent. But once you go in into the data sets. you will see that the differentials are, is not very very high there is comp like see even among the sc sts even among the obcs the kids compete it is not that there is a pre seat for them you will they will be just giving like that okay so actually if you see the upsc data set you will be surprised there is more competition in the obcs than the general category Okay, so many many places you will see cutoffs of OBCs are higher than general nowadays. Yeah, so so it is it is like that. So it is not that what people are thinking. So but but the but the thing is that a myth has been spread that uh, like for example reservation means anti merit reservation means people you are allowing people with lower ability. Ah, uh, you are allowing people who don't work hard. You allow you are allowing people. who are not capable that is that is a completely uh, like what i have to tell you is that that has to be dismissed in the present day world because everywhere you see the the thing is that reserved kids are able to get much better marks like for example aims last last year aims four students in top 100 were from scst obcs okay so they got very good marks so what happens is that it is not that they are not scoring they are scoring well okay see they need that push because of that uh, because see they have been segregated at uh, many places so initially they have to be given some push but once the push is given they catch up they perform and as you go higher and higher like for example if you go to pg data pg uh, pg marks you will see that hardly there is any difference phd there is hardly any difference and once they go to work real world mein i am telling you there are many sc st kids who are performing extraordinarily well uh, just two weeks back i met one founder from share chat he is he is from uh, our community i am telling you uh, you will be shocked he, uh, he made 100 crores the startup so all these things see what happens is that the Uh, i i keep telling in my twitter also there is no value for the hard work done by an scst kid they don't value that because they want you to be uh, told as incompetent always <laughs> but unfortunately yeah you are like you are taken for granted okay but the but the kind of hard work these kids do i am telling you it you cannot you cannot imagine i am telling you they they come up from such places like slums a uh, very very bad uh, schooling experiences government schools have you ever gone and seen how government schools are in india huh? no government schools will teach you proper english i am telling you the most of the most of the scheduled caste kids they study there but still they come up they work hard okay so but the, unfortunately the society no it doesn't respect them so much moment uh, moment uh, you tell reserve reservation no they'll tell that okay ye to reserve reservation wala hai uh, he has no brains huh he doesn't know anything i think you must have yeah yeah definitely i think i think it is like a common stereotype that exists in our society like everyone believes that without exception even people from the scst category i was surprised yes yes one 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 uh, study had happened in iit bhu 
they asked a question uh, to the reserved candidates reserved students what do you feel about the academic ability of the reserved candidate they told it is low <laughs> okay <laughs> so so that, the, that problem exists because see you are associating reservation with lower academic ability again and again so that has to change so i had proposed one change i was telling that see why do you call only general as general merit and sc as reserved category you should also call sc as sc merit no st merit obc merit list you should publish you should tell that as obc merit list by doing that people will start thinking that this is also a merit list but the problem in india is that everywhere no pe- people publish the merit list general merit general only for general merit but for obc sc st it's called a reserved list as if they they are not uh, they don't have any merit at all okay see th- these are the problems because see this is these are all perceptional issues of of the society and even if they do extraordinary work also i am telling you they schedule cast uh, kids on the obc kids every level they have to prove themselves i am telling you it is not easy for them it is not easy at all anywhere you you have to prove yourself in the graduation then you go to the job there also the you, your cast will keep on hanging on to you you have to show that you have you are capable and you and if you go to abroad also you saw that cisco discrimination case it will not leave you <laughs> even if you reach the highest positions where you are really like so called like only reach there only because of your merit okay the cast will start playing still it will not leave you so it's a, it's a, a see the, the, that is the problem with uh, uh, the schedule cast and then the obcs because see uh everywhere no this keeps on tagging with them and then uh and then it it's being used to pull them down and that is that is the reason why you don't see many people at the top today in india if you go and see the top secretaries of the government of india how many are there hardly any joint secretaries additional secretaries very few are there okay so from the scst obc community you go to the private sector private sector mein how many uh, Uh, startups are from the scst entrepreneurs hardly any and then how many billionaires let us talk about billionaires are there any billionaires from the dalit community nobody okay so see th- these are the things see what happens is that this is some kind of a stereotypical image built that this community cannot do that they are incapable so we so we have to get out of that mentality and then start exploring new things like build large organization build large enterprises everything yeah i agree so like an a, a, a so going off with that right you mentioned how there is discrimination in the job market right so just a question related to that many people believe that a free market a free market capitalism would be able to solve all of these discriminations and stuff like that because in a free market if you don't hire people on the basis of merit you know the market would hit back on you the the companies that on the basis of merit would compete i, I, I will I'll answer your question directly mm-hmm. which is the greatest capitalistic uh, nation in in the world now the yeah, america okay and the best uh, multinationals are from the us multinationals okay listed in the stock market do they give special preference to the blacks in their hiring as their as their no no as their productivity gone down these american companies has their product because see dei that is diversity equity inclusion initiative is mandatory in every mnc in us okay so they have to hire a uh, blacks okay they have to give representation at every level not like only entry every level they have to give now can you tell that an american corporation has become less productive because they gave representation to blacks no you cannot tell that okay so actually now the research when it comes to all these things it gives a different idea that by introducing people from marginalized sections okay you are actually empowering them okay you are increasing the diversity in your company your decision making ability your acceptability in the society is increased okay so what happens is that 
like like for example i'll tell you uh, it is uh, very uh, very easy to blame merit okay but how do you measure merit no no you you tell me how do you measure is it your uh, exam scores i don't think there is a definition for merit there is a definition correct that's what i'm telling you there is no definition in india they take it as something which you scored in your exams if i score 100 on 100 in 12th standard will i be a billionaire you answer me this <laughs> not necessarily okay it is not see the the thing is that the real world skills are different from the skills which are being tested okay in the real world you require you you need to be a team player you need to manage resources you need to take complex decisions just because you scored very high it does not mean that you will be a great success how many entrepreneurs like for example if you take bill gates everybody okay they are all dropouts no no bill gates mark zuckerberg is so many of them they are all dropout so more in in us it had become a fashion that if you drop out you will be more successful so you, even in india i saw some of these kids they were dropping out to start startups and all so because see the the thing is that in the real world the skills required is much much more different from what is being tested okay and i will tell you one thing you there is a kid okay from a slum he climbs up the ladder he goes to iit he cracks it okay then he achieves good cgpa also do you think his merit is big or a ordinary a school a, a guy who is an ias officer son who goes to a top school he studies there and then go whose merit is big who has struggled more the kid from the slum correct no Huh? because he is ability to bear which stand that uh, what is that uh, to come up see that hunger for success success no it is there if you go to any startups no startup uh, i i know many people who fund okay so you go and ask them see when they interview you or when they see you no they see you they don't see your idea they see whether you have that hunger all investors they see the hunger in you not like just the idea whether this person can convert this ideas into execution real implementation so what has happened is that this merit thing no our society has given too much of a bow that's what i am telling uh, but actually speaking the merit it does not play so much in the real world real world it may work it may not work i'll tell you uh, i don't want to name few doctors and all so the top most neurologist in bangalore cardiologist they are all from dalit communities do you know huh? how do you uh, if you if you score in score good in neat okay does it mean that you will be a good doctor or a doctor who has done 1000 angioplasties who is good see the doctor who has done 1000 angioplasties see these fellows have worked on the ground see when you work on the ground you will become really talented today also i am telling you even in the government services you go and see who are doing the best works you will find many many people from the scsts see i'll i'll quote one paper here because see uh, this is a myth which is created that reservation uh, uh, alters the affects the uh, bureaucratic efficiency so they did a detailed research by Uh, one political science journal political science journal uh, they did a detailed research in india they what they did was they took all ias officers they g- grouped it into reserved category and then general category they measured their bureaucratic output like for example we have apars like appraisal reports are there for every officer so they took that they measured everything and they found out that there is actually no difference between the reserved category and general category and they actually found out that in many places reserved category students were doing much better why why i am telling you this thing is that see you might have got into the jobs using reservation but that does not mean that you continue to underperform once you get into the real world real world is a different ball game altogether 
okay so different ball game and i have seen kids who have got very high marks in 10th standard 12th standard not able to even survive in a good job but uh, a schedule cash kid is doing extraordinarily well is managing big teams 100 people under him all those things see this this is the real world real world may your delivery matters no you have to deliver and in that sense what i feel is that because of the kind of backgrounds which these kids come from they have that ability to withstand that pressure and deliver and more important thing is that for an schedule cash kid what happens is that that hunger to make a place for himself see he has been hit again and again again and again everywhere that you are useless you are not you are nothing but what happens is that he wants to show that show the world that see i am also something in this world okay so what happens is that that attitude itself no it helps them to uh, make them a position in the world okay so that that is the thing yeah so um another question that a lot of the people have is um i mean why why can't we you know give reservation on the basis of like economic status right on actually it is used uh, as a sense of a cash pride okay so what i what i am telling you uh, economic reservation let us assume i'll give you a scenario where you remove all this cash okay remove all this cash okay so let us not have any cash no sc st obcs you give economic reservation will it be equitable let us assume 100 people get selected in only on the economic basis the poor how many of the those poor will be brahmins most of them this is the problem and i am telling you this has been proven in a research work ashoka university under uh, deshpande ashwini deshpande madam they have done a research and they found out that these kids have that extra advantage social capital we call it social capital cultural capital so that what happens is that see they have good access to english education see the reservation why was reservation introduced in this country do you think reservations were introduced in this country because you were poor no this is the myth which is created you it is not created why because see it was given to you because of segregation you were segregated like for example you were not allowed inside temples earlier in the ancient times the temples had the schools so because you were not allowed inside the temples you were never able to educate you never you, you never went and became even a 9th standard or 10th standard once you did not get 9th or 10th uh, do you think you will become a graduate so higher education was denied to you once you don't get the higher education do you think you will go and get good jobs government jobs no you will not get so what happened all this thing acted one upon the other and resulted in complete monopolization of government services by couple of castes you got it so uh, this is where the movement for reservation started because the first movement there, there is a legacy like 1890 1881 it has started okay like where the they they used to call them as non brahmins because the entire government services were monopolized by brahmins through this uh, through this way so non brahmin movement started even in travancore it is there even in uh, madras it is there karnataka it is there and they started demanding for reservation where did they demand for reservation they started demanding reservation in schools okay so that the kids can go into english education get english education then after that higher education so that only if you get higher education you will get into government jobs no so all these things are linked up so they created a platform so that more representation from various communities happen otherwise what will happen if you keep only one community from in the decision making position they only they will be thinking what they think is their position they may not create any policies also for the development of the others the all these battles have started because of the so reservation is not based on economics at all it is based for it is given for distributive justice okay, so all these arguments that uh, you make it on economics basis okay so uh, th- there is no basis for that okay so but the, the thing is that uh, okay like if 
if if you if you assume that if you make it, if you give only based on economic basis you will get good representation from all categories then i will agree but that will not happen because if you give only on ew economic criteria okay so what will happen is that you will again get a monopoly of the upper caste only and and, and uh, there is a there is a proper uh, work uh, which tells that eco- m- this economic income no is not a correct measure whether you are uh, excluded from something like for example i'll tell you what is the uh, ews criteria 8 lakhs per uh, this thing 8 lakhs per annum that is around 66000 per month so how many people earn less than 66 what is the ews population then you tell almost the entire 98% of general category is ews instead of that if you take ews and split it into caste wise like brahmins non brahmins muslims because many muslims also come under ews don't you think that will be a better uh, sub categorization within ews rajputs so because see, we know clearly that brahmins are getting most of the seats so by separating them out it will be a better categorization instead of the economic uh, category see here the main policy is not the the main thing is to give representation to the unrepresented some communities are not represented so we need to give them representation that is the idea mm-hmm. that is yeah. what is equality under the constitution mm-hmm. yeah i think all of these misconceptions they stem from the same idea like a core idea that they stem from right which is that all of this exclusion and segregation was in the past right now no one is segregating anyone all of these fields are open for everyone anyone can enter that is like an assumption that a lot of people have and i think you have clearly shown in your work that that is not the case all of these fields even today are dominated and you know kept as an excluded you know field by a lot of the privileged castes do you want to expand more on that idea because i think this is where all of these ideas come from uh, yeah yeah i will tell you let us first start with the education part okay i did a analysis of top private schools in bangalore okay like dps nps and many other christian schools also i took up as a sample the data is available in udisc portal in uh, it's a national portal it gives you the percentage of sc st obcs in the schools private elite schools what what should be the approximate percentage it should be 50% correct huh? 50% at least should be there you will be surprised the representation is less than 8% you understand so even in the christian schools it is not there because i was thinking at least the christian schools will give representation for sc sts huh? because many christian schools like many christians are scsts but even if you go into that data you will clearly see that christian schools are also not giving scsts so that what has happened is over a period of time this all this top english schools have become a monopoly of upper caste their only their family members get their alumni get okay so the rest they don't get at all so once that happened see you see the minimum capability he has to be built for competing any in any examination okay so it is not like i they'll tell you give reservation and then you you don't prepare them for getting that okay so na- then nothing will happen so the same thing has happened in the scst obc communities w- what has happened is that they don't have very high quality primary education english education this is a big bottleneck even today even today it's a bottleneck where do where do the scst kids study maximum they go to these government schools or they go to the state schools the second tier state schools not the best state schools also uh, where uh, they are in government school when do they start uh, english teaching english they start in uh, class 5 when uh, a kid in a top school elite school no a christian schools or anything they would be reading novels <laughs> so the gap is very huge okay so what happens is that if we we the first thing is that there is a big gap okay in the educational initial stage itself 
the kids don't get a good access to quality education so that's where ambedkar sahab was telling that we need to create a common schooling system like the us in the us what happens a black a white everybody goes into the same system they are given the same quality education but in india it is not in india it is not there india i am telling you most of the schedule cast kids most of the obc kids still they get vernacular education only <laughs> like you, you will be seeing many kids learning in malayalam okay you many kids learn in hindi in the hindi heartland okay in karnataka they learn in kannada in tamil they learn in tamil you will not you will not have english schools so still that that culture see that kind of a pro- also it is increasing but what i am telling the access to high quality english education by this community is still very less the second part which you were telling like for example let us talk about the wealth portion okay see earlier many people tell that like who see who were in the decision making positions earlier in the earlier era like for example 100 years back it was it was it was all upper caste brahmins and others now i will tell you in bangalore there were there were wadiyars it was under the wadiyars wadiyars they did a site layout okay all the prime sites were given to brahmins at a very cheap price so they got all these assets okay all the schools all land grants were given to them upper caste okay at what cost all 1 rupee per acre okay so they were able to build their institutes okay so what i am telling you see many of our kids they don't understand all these things okay so the, the thing is that see they have that intergenerational advantage which we don't have we don't have that intergenerational advantage like for example today a site which was given 100 years back it will be crores in bangalore or even in kochi or anything they can just sell it and live for rest of their life okay so most of the schedule cash they don't have any assets okay they have no assets and i am telling you if you are some specific harijan colony ambedkar nagar such kind of a region okay because everywhere they have marked us out everywhere in india i don't know how this has happened but they have marked us no bank will give you loans no credit card company will give you credit cards <laughs> okay so for me i did not get a credit card for a long time because my address was in uh, harijan colony only when i shifted my address i started getting a credit card <laughs> so see, the reality is that see uh, since we are marked as poor we are not capable okay all this thing plays out we will not be able to get good capital we don't have good guidance no uh, like for example uh, no network even if you start a business no who will buy your products that that issue is there so the networking is not there so these are all bottlenecks the same thing if you see in a jain or a gujarati okay what will happen a jain or a gujarati they have uh, temples which fund them easy money they'll give them zero uh, percent uh, interest loan have you do you do you see that in the, this thing in uh, in scst obc communities scsts especially no this is the reason why scsts are not coming up in businesses it is because they don't have the intergenerational advantage that is why many people tell them you go into some corporate job or a government job because that is safer in business no it's very difficult to survive because you require so many other factors influencing you and even and you see i am talking more about uh, the urban areas if you go to the rural areas in the rural areas what what had happened earlier it was all zamindars okay the zamindars were all uh, mostly dominant obc caste some gounder or uh, in karnataka gaudas so they will hold on to the land and these people will go and work there nobody has any land most of the scheduled caste are all landless laborers they don't have land they go and work for others or they are casual workers who go and work, do this construction work all these things so without any asset if you tell them you build yourself how will they build 
so this is where government has to step in and then they have to empower them so only mm. then they will be able to move up yeah so throughout generations certain caste group especially the privileged caste groups have built capital and social networks that sort of helps them maintain the dominance in all of these fields this is what the point is okay um so i think that is a interesting point um so what what do you think about like um the creamy layer filter so some people want to implement the creamy layer filter within like yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i think uh, they have completely got the creamy layer concept completely wrong okay see that is actually used as used to attack attack civil caste student how did this start i'll tell you in twitter and all you know tina dabi correct tina dabi when she got rank 1 she uh, tina dabi is uh, she was a dalit girl who topped the upsc exam she got rank 1 then some uh, some upper caste uh, guy he was not able to take it okay so he started a tweet see this uh, this tina dabi did not get because of her hard work it is because her father was a, a ias officer mother was something so they are all from privileged families actually she is eating up the seat of a poor dalit you understand no so basically to to show show that they the it is it is not a correct selection okay all these things were started but today see what what i am telling you is that the data okay is there a data to show that only ias officers kids are getting selected in upsc is, is there a data to show that only creamy layer children are getting selected generations after generation where is the data see the supreme court mm-hmm. is talking about this everybody is talking about where is the data i am telling you there is no data one study has happened in up one mr vivek kumar from jnu has done a analysis he took out all ias officers in up you asked them whether your kid went to ias then he found out that hardly anybody has gone they are also struggling <laughs> see this is the reality okay see you build a narrative but actually it is not substantiated by data at all but actually if you see creamy layer exists in the judiciary if you see most of the judges have their fathers as judges or cgis okay you, you can prove that very easily but the same thing in the acst case you cannot prove that and i am telling you this creamy layer how it started where it, where it, where did it start it started during the mandal commission so what happened is uh, you know rajiv gandhi correct rajiv gandhi in the he was in the opposition then and vp singh was trying to implement mandal commission report when the mandal commission report came rajiv gandhi asked only one question how come you are only basing the obc reservation only on uh, this thing like caste because obc reservation is only based on caste where is the economic criteria he started arguing that see otherwise all the zamindars will take over, take control of this reservation okay so from there they created this creamy layer concept and then if you have to see the supreme court interpretation of creamy layer what is a creamy layer creamy layer does not mean that you you are economically empowered creamy layer means you have very high social status like a zamindar let us assume that you are working in a software industry software company like infosys earning more than 8 lakhs does it mean that you are in a creamy layer no you are not in the creamy layer but if you own the software company and if you employ employ lot of people so your social status is very high so the supreme court told that you, you see if you see obc reservation obc reservation has two criteria social backwardness and then educational backwardness so they told that social backwardness may if you are so high in economic status that people start respecting you and then you are an ias officer you start respecting you how can we tell that you are a social backward fellow an ias officer cannot be told as a social backward fellow he is socially forward okay so they excluded all these categories of people creamy layer 
but the myth which is created in the market is that it is based on economic criteria it is not on economic criteria now you tell me a obc kid is there okay who earns 8 lakhs as salary okay whether he has a very high social status in our society no you you should answer this question do do you does he have a very high social status it depends a, a, it not depends. Or, a, or a or a group c government servant a peon who is hmm. earning just 5 lakhs who, who has more social status <laughs> it, it it depends on your identity if you are a muslim you know in the obc category it doesn't matter what you are doing you know <laughs> you are always seen as some someone lower than the other people or if you are from the underprivileged caste in the obc category you're always seen as yeah so see this these are the measures which they told so they put an artificial filter of 8 lakhs okay but there is and one thing is that see this creamy layer what happens i'll tell you creamy layer is a very dangerous thing this has happened in obcs when when the creamy layer was introduced in the indra sahani case judgment supreme court supreme court told that see you don't make this line a very rigid line tum a rigid line mat karo because see what happens you make it too rigid and exclude too many people then reservation quota hi nahi fill hoga it will never be filled up so the same thing has happened in obcs today obc is 2015 16 there was a report on creamy layer they tell that in government the filled up they can filled up quota is just 15 12% percent. 15% quota is not filled up at all so by introducing creamy layer in schedule cast what you are going to do is you are only going to increase the unfilled vacancies see in in schedule cast even today i am telling you what is the real problem the real problem is not like all seats are getting filled up you go to iit is many seats are not filled up neat 7% seats are empty pg empty okay so many places seats are going empty in all universities not found suitable nfs so if you introduce creamy layer what will happen this is unfilled vacancies will have more increase and if unfilled vacancies increase who will be benefited the general category no finally it will go there <laughs> see these are all see uh, th- this is the issue in creamy layer so the and creamy layer no courts have approved for scst see uh, cre- why i am telling you the original indra sahani judgment told that only if your social status is very very high okay you will come in the creamy layer but unfortunately in the schedule caste what happened let us assume i uh, an is officer is there from schedule caste whether his social status is very high you tell me that he so not necessarily because he is still an untouchable his social status does not change he will not be able to marry a brahmin girl a poor brahmin girl also he cannot marry i am telling you <laughs> because i know so many of my friends who are not able to marry okay because although they fell in love with uh, some upper caste girl they were not able to marry it's a very common thing i think you will also know many stories in kerala to i think it is very horrible huh? <laughs> in kerala tamil nadu tamil nadu is very bad but kerala i have not heard of this honor killing and all tamil nadu is very bad for honor killings even karnataka has honor killings mm-hmm. kerala i don't think it is so bad yeah i mean it is happening but yeah. and and even the exclusion is very subtle you know i mean uh, you are vegetarians we are not i mean you are non vegetarians we are vegetarians so culturally it would not work out that yeah, that is a sort of you know justification that is given but still that is happening like, yeah yeah that will happen no no but in some places like uh, karnataka tamil nadu you you are killed <laughs> that is very very dangerous and Uh, and the sad part is that i was seeing uh, some of the these kids who were killed in tamil nadu uh, the sc boys and i am telling you that that girl no girl's family is nothing it's very very poor okay so they probably would have not got a better kid than that guy <laughs> so this is the thing but the thing is that they feel uh, they they feel that their uh, status is hurt no 
your honor is hurt because you are marrying a dalit kid so they they became social their social status came down because of that so the supreme court clearly tells that in case of dalits it is very very different their social status does not increase in this country okay whatever you do it does not increase so what happens is that there is no concept of creamy layer which can be created for uh, this thing dalits it's impossible and that is what the government also has stated now i think last week they have told that creamy layer is now is not going to be introduced in sc it, it is not going to be introduced it's a wrong concept basically uh, you know the creamy layer concept essentially you have to show that a certain group of individuals you know are in a socially high status enough where they are able to overcome the exclusion okay. correct correct so in is why this was introduced was in obcs you know they were big landlords zamindars so the uh, the question came up in the parliament telling that see if you don't introduce creamy layer this cream this uh, zamindars and all they will take over ias everything using this reservation so the basic idea was that to avoid all these people and so that it goes down to the real needy but unfortunately in the scst community we don't have such landlords the landlords or such communities which have multiple generational even if it is there it may be very few so what i feel is that see uh, although see sometimes i feel that okay it may be a good concept for scst but what i am feeling that the effect it will have on exclusion because see our quotas are not getting filled up if the quotas are not getting filled up then by excluding this creamy layer no what will happen is that that increase the unfilled vacancies will again increase so the agenda now in scst is to fill up these vacancies so probably when the filling up has happened for substantial number of years then probably we can think of creamy layer to summarize all of the points essentially in order to show that a certain group of individuals are part of the creamy layer you have to show that they are you know in a in a they have a social status high enough that they are able to you know escape from the exclusion that society is imposing on them and they are able to you know compete without the reservation policy you know maybe you can compare the data in the non reserved you know uh, enterprises like the private enterprises and stuff like that and show that these particular groups they don't need reservation they are being represented fairly without res- reservation itself and then you can say okay these people group th- these certain you know group of individuals they don't need reservation they should be part of the creamy layer filter but in the in the case of scst it is the ulta it's it's the opposite that's happening you know the seats are not even getting filled up introducing the creamy layer will, would only make that worse that is essentially the main yes, argument yes 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 it will make it worse and then many seats will again go back to general <laughs> so once it is not unfilled it will go to general no so See, this is like a big uh, vicious circle. <laughs> We should not allow that to happen. Okay, so and then and and then it is completely with sync with the constitutional principles. Constitution says that creamy layer is not a rigid line. Supreme Court has told that it can be flexible. And now I am telling you, there is a move by National Commission for OBCs to remove this creamy layer in OBCs. You will, you they they have already published a report. because this creamy layer is creating a problem in obcs because it is the seats are not getting filled up there so every because see you make it very rigid you exclude a large section and only those section can compete okay then how uh, uh, how how can you tell that uh, uh, like like then the seats will not get filled up no because you are going to keep see it is not that you are going to take a dud scst obc kid you will fix up a high cut off huh? otherwise you will start crying that uh, merit is compromised a merit uh, all useless people are coming all those things huh? <laughs> so what happens is that see that is where i am telling this is a very complicated thing creamy layer introduction talking is very easy implementing is a big uh, problem yeah so i mean you need a good enough criteria that way you know you're not excluding people also you need a good enough criteria yeah yeah yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. Today the problem, the today the problem in OBCs, SCST is that you are excluding too many people. You are not including. The seats are not getting uh, filled up. See, you go to railways. Railways group A services. What is the representation of general category? Sixty-five percent. SCST OBC altogether it is only thirty-five percent. And then see all these fellows they take the total number of employees. Bihar cash census has shown that see if you take most of the SCSTs, no, eighty percent of the SCST employees are there in group C and group D. Safai karmachari. If you go to the higher positions, no, they are not there. Okay, so what happens is that this is all like jugglery. <laughs> you have to be very very careful because see. Already people are not there at many places. Now, if you don't allow this creamy layer also to compete, see this creamy layer is not like a, you are being given in a, a, a silver plate or anything like. They compete, no, just like others. They compete and take the positions. So, but by excluding them, what will happen? Uh, the seats will go vacant, and that will be a big damage. Hmm. That will be a big damage. And one more problem with creamy layer in SCST is that see SCST is a political reservation unlike OBCs. Now you tell me, can a poor person uh, uh, stand for elections in India? If you exclude the creamy layer in politics from uh, SCST, who will compete? Who will go and become MLAs? Who will become MPs? Uh, so finally, what will happen? Uh, they will all become slaves of the uh, some party or some upper caste. Because only they can finance you. That has already happened in Tamil Nadu and all. You will see a lot of uh, dominant caste. No, they marry, they they uh, take some uh, SC women, okay, and then they will make them president, panchayat president. So uh, su such kind of a slavery will come off. So real real intellectuals will not be able to compete in this uh, this thing. Come up. Yeah. So. Um, some people argue that reservation should be limited to the SCST category. OBCs don't need reservation. Oh, that is, that's a very big argument. That is, a, that is an argument which I have seen in many interviews where there are people, very big intellectuals who support SCST reservation, but they start telling that OBCs, why do they require reservation? They are landlords. Okay, why do they require reservations? Okay, and most of them, what happens? Unfortunately, they blame VP Singh. They start blaming VP Singh, telling that this VP Singh fellow he started, he played a big political game, huh, for his position because he was losing, he was uh, losing his position. So, to for that, he introduced OBCs. See, this is a completely a far statement. I am telling you. Okay, completely far statement. Why I am telling you, the OBC reservations has a history of 110 years 1881 is the first instance of Jyoti, Jyoti, Jyoti Rao Pule in Maharashtra he goes to the hunter commission and he tells them that see our kids are not able to study because backward uh, uh, kids were also not allowed inside schools so he makes a representation to hunter commission and he tells them please allow us access so then the access is given to them then there are various movements, like for example, Periyar movement is there in Tamil Nadu. In Travancore also there is a uh, there is a movement, Ilavas especially. Huh? And then in Karnataka in the Vadayars time, Miller's report is there. Miller's report, Miller's commission. There they that was the first place where they introduced fifty percent reservation for non brahmins That is OBCs. Okay, so similarly various commissions under they saw that the representation was not there for OBCs. Okay, so because of that only the reservations have been given to them. Now, when people tell that OBC reservation should not be there, you tell me what is the representation of OBCs today in uh, central universities? Professors, how much? How many professors are there? Four percent. Four percent are there. That's all. Okay, with reservation you are four percent. Okay, secretaries, you are hardly some seven secretaries, seven, eight secretaries. That is to with uh, reservation. 
you go to bank the chief general manager general manager obcs don't exist so where is the argument that you should not get reservation if you are overly represented okay you are eating up everything you are monopolizing some services then i can tell that obc should not be given reservation and then you i uh, there is a famous report uh, called uh, state of working india you should read that from azim premji university they also get into the economic part of the obc the csg and all okay so what they talk is like see obcs were traditionally business people correct they they are supposed to be found in businesses not in government services but when they did a study they they were surprised that see they found they are present in businesses but they are present in businesses where the enterprise employee size okay is less than 7 only in small companies they are there one one uh, one small provision store uh, a barber shop obcs are there but as you cross 7 where you get into big enterprises where you start seeing uh, stock market companies okay listed entities you don't see obcs there is only upper caste there more than 20 you will see only upper caste dominated companies all nsc bsc listed companies they are all upper caste companies obc companies are not there so these are all myths okay wealth again wealth is not concentrated more in obc piketty's latest report latest paper billionaire raj to british raj so that paper talks about this they they talk that uh, almost the entire uh, wealth okay is concentrated in the upper caste obc wealth is decreasing so from every angle so from every angle when you see what it appears is that the obcs have to be empowered more there is a very strong case for increasing the reservation <laughs> yeah not decreasing but unfortunately what is happening because they are becoming very politically empowered hmm? and then and and uh, and see increasing reservation does not mean that you will not do well like see you see the example of tamil nadu tamil nadu has 69% reservation it is also one of the top states in uh, gsdp that is gross state domestic product okay so they have created uh, great industries they have created great uh, like they have best uh, medical facilities educational facilities so it there is no relationship between all these things see reservations will help you only to create the pool of people it will help to improve the capabilities of that person but once once you capability is developed you are left no see i take reservation when i was in college but do i take reservation now no in the jobs where do you take you have to work hard <laughs> nobody will nobody will give you any promotion if you go and tell that uh, uh, i am from ac category you give me promotion even in uh, government there is no promotion reservation see every every kid who is see the the role of reservation is only to bring them to a level where they can survive and compete but after that no it is up to you completely up to you and it's the ability individual ability why they are surviving and today i am telling you there are a lot of sch to obc kids who have made a name for themselves okay. they have really uh, created a excellence which i i am telling you i am very proud of them because i i gave you examples also there are entrepreneurs who have made hundreds of crores okay they have they are owners okay big business they employ many people okay so the in the in the current era we are seeing that that empowerment is happening okay as we go ahead it will move ahead and many people see gradually see the role of government jobs also is coming down see what is the percentage of uh, uh, jobs impacted by reservation in india it is hardly 2% see how much is the government jobs in india 2% that's all the rest are all in the private jobs but people keep putting reservation 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 the 98% of the jobs are not affected by reservations <laughs> 2% job the problem with this 2% is that these jobs are very important 
ஒருத்தர்ஸ்டிபிள் <laughs> but still they want that because see what has happened is that scst kids today they have started competing they have started studying they know the value of education long are the days where scst parents know they don't give good education to the kids most of the mothers scst mothers know they want the kids to get good education they put them in good schools they give them good tuitions okay they compete okay so that competing ability is coming in all this uh, categories so what i am telling as it increases okay the role of reservation is going to come down and then the role of reservation is already low in this country it is not like very very high as i was telling only 2% of the jobs are impacted by reservation see you private sector who has the advantage of getting a job upper caste do you think we have the network into the private sector no nobody has if if i have to refer a refer a scheduled caste kid to a company i will not know the hr there i will not i will not have many employees but an upper caste will have they will refer see it it acts in a very very different way the private sector see the this all this myth of merit no huh see uh, the, the invisible privileges will never be seen okay so for example nobody will accept that invisible privileges Hmm. like for example that one book i was reading where they tell about uh, these invisible privileges uh, experienced by rich entrepreneurs okay like for example if you talk about bill gates or elon musk they will all tell that they have worked hard and come up hmm? okay but you must see who gave how did uh, bill gates get his first customer in ibm his first customer was ibm okay it was through his family network okay who invested in facebook it was mark zuckerberg's parents parents dell okay mm-hmm. so all these are invisible privileges mm-hmm. which the scheduled caste kids don't have yeah okay so but all these kids what they tell they are they are there only because of merit yeah yeah <laughs> they never talk about all these privileges mm mm-hmm. that is something i wanted to touch on like w- what is the hiring process in the private sector like you know is it just based on merit like you just look at the resume of the person and yeah i mean he has a good mark and stuff like that you interview the person and assess if he has merit is that how the hiring process happens in the private sector in reality or is it more like network the private sector hiring they they you see big mnc's like american mnc's they have a process they will have various rounds and other things but what i am telling you here is the discretion during the interviews they all have also interviews and all so there the the thing is that because you are prejudiced okay over a scs ticket that he has lower academic ability you may not hire him you may not hire him because of that prejudice nothing else because see generally what do you think a schedule caste kid means he doesn't have any capability you will not see what he has done also you will not see his resume okay that fellow might have coded 10000 lines he might have created some big software big portals everything but he will not see anything oh schedule caste okay hey, usko to dimag nahi hai <laughs> okay so that kind of a thing should not happen see because then you are not valuing that person okay see i am worried that that is that happens many a times because that prejudice is there in this 
even in pre- private sector it is there even in the government because if you see the interview scores and all no of upsc and all you'll come to know that most of the scheduled castes get lower marks okay very very low marks they get so that may be the prejudice is there so we have to get rid of that and that is where i think that the private sector reservation will improve all these things so when you go and work there no like i'll tell you if if a scheduled caste git goes and works with a upper caste md and if he finds out that that scheduled caste kid is extraordinarily good his perception about scheduled caste will change you will start thinking that the, what he was thinking was wrong this kids also can do well okay they are also capable so we have to create that enabling environment so that is where uh, the di initiatives which are there in us no becomes important in india see in america they have purposefully forced companies to hire blacks hispanics okay all this kind of, uh, groups so that people understand that this this these people are also capable it is not that you have to get out of this bias okay so only so now now that culture has to come so because in india we don't have big representation in private sector scst obcs especially we don't have we like for example if you take a permanent salaried employment very very low representation okay permanent salaried employment may very very low and then even in boards board of directors the representation is very low in all listed entities so only when see when it is forced when some people are given entry okay then they will start performing see for that matter see you have given it in government government uh, uh, see the general problem with the common man is that government is inefficient but you cannot push the same argument to the private sector okay so w- w- what i am what what i am telling you is that inefficiency in the government is not because of reservations it is because of many other things okay because systems may not be there okay so but many government uh, are uh, many government agencies are actually very efficient like for example if you see railways they operate so many trains okay so so uh, that, that is what i am telling see you cannot compare private sector and then government sector and then take a decision okay the private sector employs a lot of people especially the permanent salaried employment like software com- software industry consulting industry so in all this industry some kind of a representation will improve the overall behavioral things towards this communities also yeah okay and i i also think that the networking that these upper caste uh, privileged groups have it gives them a huge advantage in the private sector as well because yes, you know most of the people in the in, in the privileged positions when it comes to private sector they are from the upper caste so they i i'll tell you i'll tell you one uh, real incidents when uh, a venture capitalist was telling me huh a venture capitalist he did not know that i am a scheduled caste okay he was telling me that a uh, agrawal hai to like we will give directly 1 crore you understand because it is not because he is biased what he thinks that he had funded few agrawals earlier so he was successful like the same thing happens if you uh, like if you have funded few iit iim alumni earlier so you you are successful you try to you tend to give them more okay it is the same thing what happens is that they create a model in their brain thinking that see if i give to this particular category of people okay uh, so they are very very uh, then i can make my money they are very good in business jains are great in business okay so schedule caste are duds uh, <laughs> so this is how it works okay because and it is also some somewhat like these are all societal things which people accept also like especially when it comes to jains gujaratis you are, you are branded as a great business guys correct so if you if you see kerala kerala people what they tell they go to dubai <laughs> okay and kerala nurses okay they are very popular uh, so these are all stereotypical 
image like what what is happening but actually what what they don't see is that the capabilities individual capabilities is there in everyone so that individual capabilities they have to explore and then make sure that they get a chance to uh, achieve whatever they can mm. yeah i agree so yeah that is like um what i was trying to say and um also i think um what what kind of a system should be implemented in the private sector in, like in india is it like a diversity program or you know is it like a reservation system like in a private sector this models which uh, people are talking about one is some kind of a nerds model nerds model i have heard in few places nerds model means you nerds the private sector to hire from these communities because you give you give the, you give them some tax incentives if you hire more number of scheduled castes and then you give them some tax incentives okay or you give them some discounts you give them some subsidies all those things so that is one model which people are thinking the second model is the diversity equity inclusion program that is don't impose a quota on them but you tell them that see you try to increase diversity equity uh, so that through a qualitative approach not like a quantitative reservation quotas the third the last one is obviously the reservation quotas like which which exist in the government most of them are in favor favor of the first two type of a model but i i but i am i am in favor of more of the quota type of model like which is there in the government because it will see i am i am not telling them to give it at the higher levels but at the entry level entry level you have you give them a chance because after that no once they start working like for example you get into a infosys kind of a company you work there for 2 years then you can quit there and then go and jo- join somewhere else after that quota doesn't does not work there only at the entry level when you are taking freshers probably you allow them quota hmm so because they because what will happen a big chunk will get a chance no inside like 50% 100 out of 150 kids of scst obcs will get a chance to get in and work in the private sector so that will increase their representation and also it will empower them yeah see all these models are there but still people see private sector uh, there is a issue of uh, because see government cannot enforce it on private properties they can enforce it only on government institutions so how it will be implemented courts have to uphold the, those things so private sector implementation is quite a difficult so many are thinking that the first two models where the nudge model where it is not like a forcing the private sector or the second model where dei initiatives there it can be implemented yeah okay um also what do you uh, think about the narrative that markets are so market is like solving discrimination right so i i uh, think that that is a false narrative i don't think that the markets are solving discrimination instead of that i think the markets are facilitating the discrimination for example you know if you take the case of zomato now where you have like a vegetarian category where you have vegetarian hotels where vegetarians prepare your food and vegetarians deliver your food you know that that is clearly you know if you understand the caste system you know how what is going on there right and i think that is a good example of how the market is actually using like the already existing social hierarchies for making profit because obviously these are their market market per se see markets uh, it's basically dependent on the society correct what is their perception of the society like i'll give an example if there is a brahmin's cafe you will go and buy eat idlis there everything if there is a dalit cafe will you go no so the, see market they are willing to incur that loss even if the price is low they won't go uh, you will not go because see the the problem is that markets are run by people okay the people have this prejudices so when mm. the prejudices are there obviously it will get translated in some way or the other and that results in inequality okay so 
so uh, other way you see today why many uh, scst obc kids are not able to start any business it's because of all these prejudices you go and ask any scst kid uh, the thing is that the parent will not give you any money they'll tell you go and uh, work somewhere <laughs> okay so see the the thing is that see uh, it is very easy to tell market will solve the problems okay then why reservations are also needed if market is going to solve that problem why do you have to give reservations market should take care of it no take care of the representation of the, even the marginalized groups we, why reservations have come up is it will not take care <laughs> it will not take care if you purely go by merit all the candidates in the government and in the private sector will be from one or two communities that you agree huh so but that is not a fair system because see the society has many things we don't know some sometimes we do, can't explain why these things are happening why only one community is getting selected why those communities are not getting selected you may blame that they don't have merit and all but it's you see we can't explain those things so we have to purposefully give that distributive justice to this community because that that is only pure justice because see the uh, otherwise you will create a chaos in this uh, society so what will happen one one section will be very developed another section not developed the other section which is not developed will keep seeing the other uh, that section which is developed and keep blaming them for their downfall <laughs> and eventually it will lead to a social chaos huh? so if, if you want to build see the constitution talks about brotherhood fraternity okay so only when the entire sections of the society start thinking that okay the governments are fair to me also they are treating me well okay they are giving me an opportunity to de- develop then only that brotherhood will uh, improve no but if they start thinking that this government is not doing anything huh? they are doing only for one community <laughs> where where will that brotherhood come see these are all see even if you want to build the nationalistic kind of a mindset all these things are needed you cannot expect a very weak person to talk of nationalism and all those things okay because for them for him the survival is more important okay so see these are all basic things see what i am telling is what we are talking of for the scst obc communities are all basic things we are not talking of some Uh, big uh, benefits or anything they these are needed for the survival no see they also have kids a, a cst mother also wants their kids to be uh, engineers doctors they don't want them to go and work as safai karmachari no huh? so see the aspiration the society has to consider that aspiration and then they have to deliver that yeah yeah i mean i i, I think the point a lot of these free market believers are missing is that you know they think that in actuality what is happening is we have you know a lot, lot of different people in our society and they are thinking about how to make more money and how to make more profit and stuff like that uh, over their caste prejudices and you know their caste hierarchical you know systems but in, in reality people are preferring their caste hierarchical systems over you know making profit yeah so you 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 take any you you take any top uh, listed entities reliance birlas you go and see their senior managers i am telling you go and study their senior managers you will see that they are all coming from one caste <laughs> so, so and then again there was one study from iim which i did not quote the the thing is that in mergers and acquisitions no like for example you are an entrepreneur you want uh, some big company will come and acquire you they found out that dalit companies will never be acquired by anyone although there is some value in it i so uh, th- this are the kind of things so what i am telling you see uh, they will prefer a uh, upper caste uh, companies to be acquired merger in mergers acquisition all these things funding these are also this is the reason why dalit companies are don't figure in the top 
NSC list or anything, listed uh, entities. So there, there are a lot of bottlenecks for this uh, entrepreneurs. It is not that they don't work hard, they don't have the ability. Unfortunately, what is happening is that they don't have the societal support. Mm. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was thinking about the example of like renting houses, right? So even if like a lower caste person is offering me a house for a very low rent, I would still go with an upper caste person who is asking me for more rent because I'm willing to incur that loss. You know, I... I, I See, another aspect is that, you know, in in Bangalore, I was seeing some of my relatives, they stay in this uh, upper caste areas. They converted themselves into completely vegetarianism. They stopped eating non-veg. <laughs> okay, I'm telling you because they, they live like Brahmin. Because they don't have non-veg, they uh, have only vegetarian, they have adapted their culture Okay, so it is like that, see, but it's okay. Why did they do that? Because they want their kids to be educated in that area. I, I, I'm I, okay with all those things because, see, if you don't change yourself, then they will got, they will not be able to give good education to their kids. See, so that, that is what I am telling. Uh, but we see, there are a lot of bottlenecks everywhere, okay, to come up. And already uh, these kids are struggling. Okay, it's not like so easy. And we should not make their life even more miserable. Okay, so handholding should be there for all of them. And then they should come up and then see. And at the end, it is not that they are monopolizing their resources. See, India, see, India is built on taxpayers' money. Okay, taxpayer money should go to only one community or should go to all communities. <laughs> should go to all communities, no. So that is the idea of all these things. See, equal distribution and then so that no concentration of wealth is there. Okay, no concentration of status, power in few communities. See, that is where all these reservations come in. And uh, we and unfortunately what has happened is we have failed. To, the education system has failed to educate our students and faculties. Okay, about all these things. Because see, nowhere it is taught. The first time uh, you encounter scheduled cast is in your college only when you're graduate. Huh? Okay, because there you start uh, seeing uh, like a lot of opposing things in universities. University life is hell for many of our kids. Hmm? Hmm? But there they should reform. They should bring in uh, anti-discrimination laws, everything. Okay, so unfortunately nobody brings in. You see in IIT Bombay they are uh, putting uh, segregated vegetarian spaces. How is it allowed? It's not possible, no. In uh, in uh, malls, do you have such a space where only vegetarians are allowed to sit there? Uh, do you have it in the airports where only vegetarians can sit and eat? <laughs> These are, see, if you are developing such a culture in the kids, okay, how will they grow up? Uh, but the same kid, unfortunately, an IITN no, who comes out of this institute, he will go to US and he will eat beef there. <laughs> that is what will finally happen. Huh? But, but, but the thing is that people have to understand, especially in the university culture, okay, a more enabling environment should be there for this SCHT OBC kid. So that, see, that is where, like, see, many kids know, I have seen that they have their first experience of all this thing. Otherwise, nowadays, in the schooling at all, it is all, nothing is there. University is a very nasty place. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I agree. Yeah, I mean, um, another um, criticism of the distributive justice model that a lot of uh, the anti-reservation camps have is essentially... You know, just by looking at the disparity or underrepresentation of certain groups, how can you say that they are being discriminated? That is a question like a lot of these people have. Okay, these people are underrepresented, that's fine. But how are you saying that that is because of discrimination? It could be because of a lot of other reasons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is completely proven now. See, this is this argument is completely wrong because I already explained it to you earlier also now. See, what happens is that Discrimination is segregation. 
see how all these things started like for example you were segregated from getting education you were segregated from starting a business you were segregated from getting a good salary by having a good government job this is all segregation only no you are not allowed inside government job so what happened by segregation what happened you were not able to provide your kids a good quality education in a good school okay and that led to educational backwardness and once educational backwardness happened you were not able to go into the graduation your higher education became completely monopolized by one or two communities like brahmins ayers okay so they monopolized it and uh, nobody else backward communities nobody were able to get into the higher education because you did not get into higher education now you were also not getting into government jobs because you are not eligible for those jobs it led to inadequate representation in government jobs see i will tell you ambedkar ji he, he, he argues after pune pact 1932 1932 was the time when pune pact was introduced but 1941 he goes to the viceroy and he tells them that see see you agreed on pune pact huh, to give uh, people but today i can't see one ias ips in anywhere from a scheduled caste community and what is the th- reason he tells that see upsc then the federal commission was there it is rejecting every scheduled caste candidate as not found suitable <laughs> the interview okay so then he tells them so see this is unacceptable he introduce a scheduled caste member in the upsc and he also argues that there should be a fixed reservation at the ias ips level that is where the reservation comes in so wh- what i am telling you is that see these are all long battles okay so it is not like it has happened over a period of one day two day and then there is a huge section of society impacted by that see we are talking of 80% of india impacted by reservation okay so why that has happened because there is no there is no equality it is such a skewed distribution of wealth education education assets everything no the a large section of society does not have that Okay, only when you make it equal, then will it become equal. Now, otherwise, it is very difficult. Yeah, a lot of people say that uh, the underrepresentation is because of their choice. <laughs> a lot of anti-reservation people. Ah, uh, my because of the choice means I did not get this. Yeah, because they are not. So, for example, um, among the Muslims, um, religiously, they are not interested in working in the banking sector, right? so there is an under representation of muslims in the banking sector so no muslims i am telling you muslim data i have seen the sachar committee report okay so you must see the sachar committee report the problem with the muslim is they are not getting in enough number of graduates at all there are not many pool of graduation hi nahi hai muslims mein if you don't have the pool of graduates where will you compete so only those few people will compete that's all so most of this again the same problem of scheduled caste is coming in muslims muslims and scheduled caste the educational things are almost similar because both of them are getting very bad schooling see both muslims and scheduled caste they are not allowed inside top private schools <laughs> elite schools mein entry nahi hai okay so because of that their english education see most of this kids they go to very low quality english schools or they will go to these madrasas where they don't teach them in english or anything huh? so what happens is that see you have to see the problem in muslims and english schedule caste is that they don't have good number of graduate pool as you improve this graduate pool no you will be getting more employment in all private sector people will go abroad everything so the problem is there mm. yeah i mean a lo- lot of these right wing people they say the muslims are willingly making this choice they are they are willingly <laughs> whether whether schedule caste kids is also willingly making this choice 
See, he has no other way. See, he is not given a better education. Now, you you tell me there is a Muslim kid who goes into a good college. He studies well in eleventh and twelfth. He tops. Will he go to an engineering college or a, will he go to an arts college? Surely he will go to an engineering college, no? Because he has done well. But the problem, what is happening here is many of these kids initially, they don't get good quality education. They don't do well. Then finally, they are forced into all this arts education. And once you once you get into arts education, your employability becomes less. So once your employability becomes less, obviously you will not get in. You will not get into jobs like banking, all those things. You, your your ability to compete comes down. So, so it is not a choice. It is it is it is actually imposed by the society in a very indirect way. The privilege operating it invisible privileges. So that is where the government has to step in, and then they have to provide quality education to Muslims. Like for example, I'll tell you, you allow Kendra Vidyalayas for Muslims. You build one Kendra Vidyalaya, two two thousand kids at one place. Huh? Will they not? Will they not? Will they not get more graduation from the those schools? There'll be more graduates. See, to blame the community for their inability, that is what is happening in this country. If you, if you tell Dalits, no, they'll tell that they are useless. They they don't compete. Huh? But you don't give them the basic things also. <laughs> yeah, I mean. Yeah, I mean that that is that is what I'm seeing, right? From from the right wing perspective, when they make their arguments, um, they look at all of these communities as incompetent. They are lazy, you know. They're not interested. That is how they perceive all of these communities, and it doesn't even make sense because if they're not interested, then why are they applying for all of these positions? They're apply. They're trying to get in. They're trying to get into university job applications. They're trying to get into all of these positions. So that is evidence. That they are interested. Today, I had been to a village. My home village. My village is in Mysore. Okay, in Bangla Karnataka. It's a very rural rural village. Even if you go to those villages, their parents, no, they don't want their kids to go to government schools. They tell that see these government schools, they don't teach our kids anything. <laughs> they want to enroll their kids in private schools. See, what why I am giving this example is that no mother, how much ever poor they are, they don't want their kids not to be educated. Whether it is a Muslim mother, whether it's a scheduled caste mother, every mother wants their kid to be educated. Unfortunate it is that they are not getting the access. Once the access is given, no, they will prosper. Okay, this is the this is the ground reality which I am which I have seen it with my own eyes. Nobody wants their kids not to be educated. No community wants their kids to go and do cycle repair shop mechanic and all. <laughs> it is not like that. Even if you go to a slum, no, the mother there he wants uh, like uh, they want some good schools to be joined. I I receive so many uh, this thing requests for joining them to good schools and all. So I have also joined them in many schools. Because why I'm telling you the the aspirations on the grounds are far different. It is not because of their ability, but it is because they don't know how to get in into the schools. Okay, they they don't know like where to go, what to do, what is the fees, how to pay those fees, all those things. See, and uh, relatively, uh, see, these are all like uh, it's like a black box to them. Many of them. Hmm. So. See, it's a, it's a, it's an unfortunate thing that even today we don't have a common education system like U.S. or Europe. If all this if common education system we would have been there, I am telling you today the cutoffs would have been so higher in every place. Okay, even among the reserved categories. Okay, so the ability to compete, everything would have been much much higher. I agree. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So um, that is like all the questions I had, but you know, I would like to ask one more question, but it might be a repetition of some of the points that you made, right? 
um but yeah i mean i i i wanted to explore how you know all of these invisible discrimination and privileges works because i think that is something that you know the privileged groups miss they just don't understand how all of these invisible discrimination and privileges works so i mean could you like expand on that point that we you know yeah yeah see i have devoted one full chapter in my book inspiring ambedkar on this merit versus privilege one full chapter i have devoted where i mention that see merit like your economic success okay is dependent on three factors i call this as hpu formula okay whether you will be successful or not the first is h h in hpu means hard work like for example whether you have the ability to work smart work intensity of work focus without distraction all these thing factors come the second factor which many people miss out is the privilege 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 means like for example what is your parents education what support you are getting in the house whether your parent will support you parents wealth whether you can go take that money and then invest in something what is parents recurring income monthly income okay then uh, neighborhood ghettoization see what i am telling you neighborhood ghettoization is a very very common thing in southern india like for example what has happened is if you see tamil nadu karnataka almost the dalit families no they are all staying across the railway tracks holding the railway tracks but the main areas are dominated by brahmins and others so this is the ghettoization all the major facilities like good educational institutions everything is there in the brahmins area you are not allowed inside even in kerala we have like the jati colonies caste colonies the caste colony so ghettoization leads to your lesser access okay so in southern india it is very very common then family support friends network okay then there is like natural ability of the community to emphasize on education some communities think that education is useless okay you go work there oh, so you don't have to do so all this factor that comes all this thing comes under privilege the last factor is your success depends on you that is uncertainty uncertainty means you have to be at the right place at the right time hmm? otherwise you will not succeed then sometimes you there may be accident in your life and you may go back your health is uncertain your mental strength and good governance model like government what initiatives they take it also depends on that good environment so your entire success depends on all these things okay and in this privilege is something which is very very big okay so which which is very big which many people unfortunately they don't uh, give credit to that okay so they uh, see that, that is very common what i have seen is that many uh, many people even the richest of the richest guys they tell that they came up because of merit okay they will never recognize that their fathers actually helped them they had some wealth like i'll tell you bill gates bill gates why did he start microsoft because i'll tell you he was given access to a computer at a very young age okay how many kids in india has access okay so do they have the access do, do can they open up the computer and play around with it nothing no see this is the kind of a privilege or a uh, uh, opportunity they had to explore and another thing the capital like see many people tell that you go and open a company okay now bill gates mark zuckerberg they all had so much of intergenerational wealth even if they fail no they can go back to their wealth but for a salaried scst guy who does not have so, too much of a wealth if he goes and invest in a company and loses all his retirement money can he go back this is what what i am telling it's very easy for a ambani to build a business then a schedule cash uh, this thing so this is where empowerment is needed so interventions are needed so th- that is how the privilege operates yeah 
what about like the discrimination like you know when people think about discrimination they are thinking about like visible discrimination like uh, someone shouting at someone or you know like saying that i won't eat your food and that kind of stuff is there like invisible discrimination as well that happens see invisible discrimination uh, happens in a very subtle way like for example when will it happen for example when you fall in love with an upper caste kid upper caste girl like you are a dalit and if you fall in a love with upper caste girl huh uh, will that girl accept you or even if that girl accepts you whether will their family accept you <laughs> now see you are a very rich let us assume you are a very rich kid you are employed you are earning 5 lakhs per month will that family give you their daughter huh so discrimination is there no hmm? so you are empowered you are actually socially forward economically forward in terms of the society but still when it comes to a marriage are you able to marry the cash comes in hmm? why because some uh, people uh, have created this structure many people are very scared because if you go into the hindu scriptures what it tells is that how this varna system came and then caste system came is all based on the karma theory karma theory means like for example in the earlier janma of yours you have done some papam <laughs> all those accumulated papams no has made you uh be has made you born in this uh, dalit as a dalit or others okay so the scriptures don't allow you there is religious sanction against all this thing so what happens is that see it is very easy to talk about all these things but on the ground no what i see is that i today i am telling you i am seeing that many kids especially the youth like you i am seeing that they are falling in love with upper caste girls but most of them are ending up in love failures uh, they are not able to manage themselves properly uh, <laughs> i had also written an article on this actually uh, because see when see there is nothing wrong see when when a girl sees you and then when the girl sees an upper caste boy you both look same to her, to her <laughs> so falling in love is com- common okay so because when it comes to you the way you talk english or the way you interact with them you you the way you mesmerize them it's all same but when it comes to marriage no this casting will come off <laughs> so that is leading to a lot of love failures and and some places actually honor killings in places like tamil nadu all this thing no it's very ruthless some caste especially the obc caste there like gounders all they are very particular they will just go and kill them off okay so many killings have happened so but but if you see a logically if i see them the probably that boy was the correct boy see discrimination in the current world has changed completely okay like see for example uh, uh, in north india and all whenever the kid goes to a school the first thing they will be asked is the surname so there are various accounts there are various papers on this also where they tell aage kya tumhara naam ke paas aage kya hai so they keep asking that again and again so that they come to know what is your caste so uh, in uh, in kerala in every temple they make you remove your shirt uh, why do they make that <laughs> so kerala is one place where i have seen this ruthless uh, enforcement of the shirt removal huh? you go to any any small temple also they will make you remove huh? and the sad thing is in tamil nadu no they don't make uh, the vips remove like for example i am an irs officer they don't make us remove they take us directly with the shirt but in kerala i don't i don't understand what has happened there they make us even us to remove the shirt <laughs> everywhere this is one common thing i have noticed everywhere in so why are they doing that that is not a some kind of a discrimination 
see discrimination exists in our system okay but it does not because it is not allowed under our constitution because it has become an offense nobody dares to talk directly okay but it is there and preference is also there preference is also there and and this this can be solved only by a social movement or anything it cannot be solved just by reservations or other things okay because religious reforms are required in this okay like for example in the recent subcategorization order uh, a supreme court judge told that there is no varna system there is no caste system i don't know whether you saw that huh? okay so but 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 see but, but you tell me i am an IS, I, irs officer i am from iit iim i am very knowledgeable can i move up the ladder in the varna system can i be can i become a brahmin no i mean some people say that you can but you can't in reality <laughs> you can't in reality the religion does not sanction that okay so now religious reforms are required in this you should allow people to move up in the ladder okay so anyway see these are all uh, very complicated uh, topics we are getting into now it will become if we talk more it will become more complicated <laughs> i mean a lot of you know the right wingers you know right now they they say that okay varna system is actually some something in a liquid form you know you can actually change yeah, yeah, they 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 tell that see their entire idea is some people have created this myth they are telling that Uh, caste is a british construct before the british has constructed this caste system before that there is nothing called uh, caste system okay so one of us i think uh, they wrote that see why did the british choose only india to introduce caste system they had so many colonies though <laughs> why did they choose only india they could have introduced everywhere why did they choose only india to introduce caste system <laughs> so this is these are all problems and again if you see nepal nepal was a hindu rashtra like for example it's it's a classic case of hindu kingdom okay britishers were not there there so caste system existed there so without britishers it existed in nepal so these are all some kind of a narrative building all these things but what i have to tell all these people who are building all this narrative is that please be fair to the history see there is a large section of uh, india who have faced considerable discrimination who have been avoided from taking decision making positions okay don't alter the history itself <laughs> to suit your needs okay so it can never be like see for example if you go anywhere see temple entry movement is there okay you go to any temple entry movement you will clearly see that dalits obcs were not allowed in many places okay the, that is where they were uh, in kerala also no they are asking you to remove the shirts why because to the garba gudi you are not entered till the garba gudi you can go will you be allowed inside the garba gudi no you will not be allowed okay so so they, these are all the, they 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 tell some agama principle all these things but i am telling you it is it is only that yeah i mean um the main temples in kerala right shabrimala guruvayur temples you know they are very explicit about it you know we need a brahmin priest the the priest who does the ritual has to be brahmin a born brahmin you can't just learn all of the mantras and stuff like that you know you don't just get promoted yeah yeah that is okay but what i am telling you will why should a dalit be stop from accessing the god does god recognize this no no i i am asking you this question no does see for god let us assume i am a client type customer see i worship him so he will bestow his blessings on me also it is not like he'll bestow blessings only on few people why should he be denied the access see these are all self created 
irrational uh, what i am telling you rituals which has no basis even if you go into the vedas or even if you go into the scriptures and all no you can clearly tell that these are not essential okay but unfortunately few people interpret it and then introduce it to create a monopoly <laughs> okay now in tamil nadu you have reservations in priest there are backward class priest there are dalit priest can you tell that uh, the those temples are not run professionally no they are run professionally see see what i am telling you by putting all this thing extra things no you are only monopolizing you are not allowing entry to others what i call as structural barriers <laughs> you create structural barriers and then stop allow, stop up entry like today in tamil nadu lot of dalit kids they learn vedas they go do they do mantras they do mantras better than the brahmins i am telling you i have seen them in chennai when i, I was working in chennai for a long time so these are all like myths created that only a certain community can do it so we have to get out of all these things and then create a more diverse uh, space for everyone when the diversity increases automatically all these things will be solved <clears throat> yeah yeah so we have gone past 2 hours so yeah I, i also wanted to ask you about the subcategorization question but i think we can do that sometime later because we have all already... subcategorization you take it other thing because now already too many people are after my soul <laughs> because i have spoken in favor of subcategorization uh, entire india many political parties are against me <laughs> yeah yeah because i gave them some data on madiga and mala in tamil andhra pradesh i told them if i see the data it is very clear that subcategorization is needed you cannot allow monopolization okay in the name of reservation you cannot allow one community to dominate that time very clear okay and i am clear even from the brahmins uh, reservation uh, talk also why brahmins were attacked because they monopolized it if they had allowed others reservation would have never come but now in schedule caste also the same principle only one community dominates if you take minas no they are dominating the entire civil services how can it be correct see there are people from uh, other communities also no like other states like kerala tamil nadu they are also very backward okay you have to give access so subcategorization is needed so to plainly tell that it is not needed i am not agree yeah that makes sense it's, it's a system of graded inequality so we have to introduce subcat if if it if the data shows that sub, uh, like there is monopolization by few castes we have to introduce subcategory there is no other go anyway we will discuss that later on because that's a big big, uh, big topic hmm? yeah so we can find some other day and we can mr netra gol to discuss about the sub categorization specifically some other time thank you for coming on to our channel so yeah i mean our audiences we we have been introducing a lot of different you know people who talk about you know the dalit issue reservation and that. thanks a lot i also enjoyed talking with you it's uh, because most most of the things i spoke out uh, out of nothing okay so <laughs> so because the questions were very interesting huh and i hope that uh, people find it uh, beneficial thanks a lot yeah thank you so much for coming on to our channel and we will link uh, mr netrapal's books um, in the description that way people can go yeah i will send you the yes yes yeah so thank you so thank much you. and we can end the recording yeah yeah